too. As a parent, you kind of have to let go and see how far they can go sometimes. Yes. I found myself saying that a lot of times we become our ch- our children's clutches in ways because, yes, there is a delay in, in their responding to certain things or to learning, but there still comes a time where they will get to that threshold and then we have to let it go. One day a week, um, I'm just, I have a slot of time where I'm not doing anything. And, and that any not doing anything meaning no actual work. Um, it could just be me actually doing a staycation for that one day, just do, do a day rental and I'm in a room, not even in my house, so I don't have to be subject to get up and clean. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I do that once a week. And then every three to six weeks, I do a solo trip and I give myself three days mm. and two good nights is what we call it. So I always tell the children, you know, mommy won't go past two, two good nights, yeah. you know, unless I have to. Yeah. And the other thing is just once a year, I take a, a week for myself. Mm. So in between those getaways, I just find little ways to enjoy myself. It may be a meal. It may be... Um, the other day, I just went to Disney Springs and walked around the boardwalk, you know, just being a kid for a day by myself. Yeah. So just finding the joy in the small moments. Autism, Beyond the Diagnosis, Part 4. I'm excited once again to have this opportunity to share with you all uh, experiences, life experiences, as you know as well that I have two boys with autism. So this series is near and dear to my heart. So if you are watching or if you are listening, uh, make sure you share this with someone. If you have any questions for me or my guests, always feel free to ask those questions. Uh, This is one of the reasons I created this series for. Today's guest is a mom, alopecia advocate, motivational speaker, certified personal trainer, coach, podcast host, and license, licensed chaplain. Let's <laughs> show some love to special guest Stacy Halton. How are you doing this evening, Stacy? I'm great. You got me sounding like a superhero over there. <laughs> uh, that's what you are. I'm like, what? Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm excited about um, being here and sharing. Yes, for sure. And this episode, not only do we both have something in common as far as us having uh, a child with autism, but we are also from that 216. Come on, 216. (laughs) 216. (laughs) If not, you better recognize. Come on now. That's that's Cleveland for y'all. Cleveland, for those who don't know. You'll never forget it now. 216 from the house. (laughs) 216, there we go. Some people are like, 216? What are they talking about? (laughs) I still okay. kept lines too, Sean. I still have my 216. Can't let it go. <laughs> Can't let it go. Oh my God. I mean, the Browns suck, but I'm still. They're ready. terrible, but we love them. Yeah. What can you say? I've been <laughs> okay. loving them for years. Right. <laughs> I want to jump into this topic uh, autism beyond a diagnosis. This is part four. Uh, mm-hmm. Can you share your journey of discovering your child's autism diagnosis? Yeah, I was actually kind of like thinking about that because um, it happened around like COVID, you know what I mean? So I feel like for me, 2024 is almost mirror to 2020 in some regards. Yeah. A lot of similarities. And so I was just thinking about my son's growth. But honestly, COVID really, um, so it was 2020 and how I came to notice um, about him getting diagnosed months later was just being home and listening to him and looking at him, you know, during different times of the day that he would normally be in daycare. I was then there to see some things. And so by the time he got his diagnosis, it was in December of 2020. And um, it took some months to, to get to that point. Um, Like I said, I just discovered it around the springtime, right before um, COVID, his sleep patterns started to change. And I just was like, okay, he's two and a half. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm like, that kind of is normal. At least I thought it was, but then certain things weren't just kind of adding up, I thought, and, um, some testing happened. And then I got the results that, that December. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and what was going through your your head at that time? Like, what what was your initial thoughts? Man, it's just like initially you go through your head and you're like, I felt like it, I felt like something was off. And so at one point it was just like reassuring that, okay, that what I saw and what I heard from him and things that, you know, I wasn't that quite off, but then it was heartbreak. Yeah. It's like, I was a letdown, you know, and it, I was just like so many things in that moment, like I'm let down because could I have seen it sooner? Mm-hmm. And then like, what did I do? You know, it's just a lot. It's like a, a roller coaster in a very short amount of time. Yeah. And what was even more stressful was that because it was during the pandemic, we were via Zoom with, um, they had the um, Cayuga, as you know, uh, Cayuga County was, was you know, and really facilitating everything. So they were great. Um, and I'll never forget, they were like, you have to let us know right now in this moment there's no time to think we need to know right now are you in agreement to our discovery and i had gotten a phone call and around that time family and friends during the pandemic were leaving us left and right yeah it was unfortunately one of those calls and i literally paused up zoom took the call and i was like i'm sorry i can't do this it was like no you have to make the decision right now so all of that was happening. So I will always remember December 20th, 2020, always. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Because we, uh, my wife and I, we have, uh, we have three boys. We have a, a blended family. Um, so our nine-year-old uh, who, you know, we have a blended family. He was diagnosed with ADHD. Mm. We just found that out recently, but our two youngest ones that we had together Mm-hmm. my wife she works with children with autism all the time so oh, she picked it up real early when did she pick it up oh i honestly i <laughs> stacy honestly i would say maybe less i would say maybe within that first year or two. i can see i could i don't even know who your wife is but it sounds like she probably honestly probably picked something up at like six eight months easily and was like you know what you know just more because it's that mother instinct first off I'm gonna be honest with you Mm -hmm. it is the mother's instinct that um we just know our children Mm -hmm. not to say that our fathers don't I'm not you know at all um we need more fathers uh, in this role too Mm -hmm. but um we need the fathers to support the the moms more too when it comes to honey it's okay but okay you know what let's go get that checked out I think that would give us the freedom to pick up on things earlier. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Because I know for me, and, and I want to talk about this as well, because you talk about the fathers involved and stuff like that. I want to talk about that too. But yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah we need to to have a whole segment on that part. Uh, I know for me, I struggled with uh, the, the acceptance of it, right? Um, yeah. Ooh. Because, yeah, because quick backstory i mean i was married before and we kind of talked about this a little bit Mm -hmm. i was married before uh, so we have a daughter together and she's 21 now um but when now that i'm remarried with my wife and i was like seeing my my little boys i was just like oh they'll be okay like everything good you know in my head is what i'm thinking and honestly stacy i didn't really accept it until maybe about I'll say about a good year and a half ago. Mm-hmm. And they're, they're four and five. You know, wow. so, yeah. So I don't know what it is about. Oh, uh, it's just, you know, what? but I, you're not alone. I have close friends who are dads who um, have children that are on the spectrum or are special needs. And um, not to really get too d- in detail, but there was a discussion of sorts of um, challenging um, in a way, because the way we challenge is going to be an intellectual challenge. Yes. You know, how are you so acceptance to um, labeling your son as being autistic? You know, especially when you come from a background of faith mm-hmm. and when you, we have been conditioned to um, 
really don't, if you don't label it, you know, you claiming it, if you, you know, yeah, yeah. um, that, that that's how I was brought up. And so I had to kind of educate my brother and, and say, listen, um, the reports will then show that he was healed from this. A lot of a lot of times we need the documentation so that we can get the exposure mm-hmm. of a lot of things that we need in our community. Better teaching, better training for you know how do you how are you going to do that, um, and how is that living in this way where we want to raise awareness? Yeah, use it to the advantage of that instead of saying how you know putting a negative thing on it on my faith. I believe that yes, God is a healer and how he decides to do that through my son, I have no control over it, but I know I will know it, mm-hmm. you know? And then, so we have to even, and I'm sorry, let me know if I'm going too far. No, we, no, we <laughs> right, can but, Let's go, let's go. But I, but I really do feel like that. Like even when it comes to, um, you know, thinking about his story, my son's story, Carter is his name, mm-hmm. um, how much he has progressed since 2020s to mm-hmm. 2020. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I'm like, to me, that's a wins are wins, but that's a miracle yes. because for once for my child to, you know, for them to actually, he is nonverbal in the sense of the limit of communication that he has mm-hmm. um, in his, in his uh, maturity level and his cognitive level. Right. Yes. Um, and so, but he's talking, mm-hmm. but he's phrasing things, but he's, you know, repeating things, echoing, we call it. But at the same time, he wasn't doing that um, two years, three years ago. Yeah. So those are the, the miracles that I like to highlight when I say, yes, autism, he, my son it does have autism. And within that, his boundaries are not, he, it's limitless for him on, on the growth that he can have in his life. Yeah. Yeah. And like you say, I, I love the progress, right? It's, you know, it's... Yeah the from what you see in the first six months to a year from that year to next year and uh time moves pretty fast because my five-year-old he uh i mean he know all the states he knows the capitals i mean he's only five um he keep asking me when we're gonna move to brazil uh (laughs) together (laughs) (laughs) you know so uh just seeing that growth and then my four-year-old because he he was he's he's still somewhat nonverbal, but now he's starting to say it's abcs and uh happy birthday singing that and stuff like that even though it's none of our birthday yet but (laughs) you know he's he's getting queued up right yeah right (laughs) So, yeah, it's that progress and uh, that, you know, regardless of how God wants to move in their life and how it's going to impact us, uh, we just have to be obedient to. Have to. uh, And, you know, too, like that's part of using what God gives us to be a witness Mm -hmm. for him. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So how can I use this for his glory? What do you mean? How can I use autism? How can I use alopecia, you know, which is the diagnosis that I've been given, how can that be a witness? Because I'm putting the awareness out of this thing that tried to take me out, claim me, you know, that tried to put a label on me and, and my son in, in a negative way. No. So what we do then is people begin to be curious of how is it that you're so strong in this capacity? There's got to be something else. Mm. There's got to be something that's holding it all together. And that's when I redirect to my faith and to my trust and hope in the Lord. Mm. So it does come around. It does. We just got to be willing to like put ourselves out there, get on some boards. You know, I, I, here in Orlando, I connected with the University of Central Florida and Mm. they have a whole department dedicated to AFD. Wow. it go, you go through this grueling process and I, I'm grateful for it um, mm-hmm. to make sure you are that parent that's going to be dedicated to change. Yes. And not playing games out here. Yes. So that's how you can use your voice mm-hmm. in the community and where we're at. Yeah. For sure. For sure. Uh, what were some of the biggest challenges you faced in the early years of parenting a child with autism? You know what? That's a really good question. And it was really the support. Um, and not just the, um, cause right away, um, Cayuga County, and then we're now in Orlando. So Orange County, the transition was great. Yeah. Um, I had the backing as far as all of the therapists that he would need and 
the resources were were there, you know, and the move to Orlando really kind of increased the availability of that a, a lot, which was one of the reasons why we did move. Yes. But it was the other support of friends and family um, and community that looked like me mm. that was going through the similar challenges of, you know, just wanting the support of what questions should I ask, you know, during the IEP, can I have someone kind of like run through that with me and like, what questions should I avoid, but what questions should I really kind of ask and what, you know, those things. I really wish that there was like a mediator between the parent and the teacher and the therapist that could help with that process. Mm -hmm. So I just started showing up, you know, um, refusing the Zooms if I didn't have to like I'm oh you're coming in yeah because I want you all to see me in person standing up for my son and be, being a voice for him especially we are in a predominantly Hispanic community where he goes to school at um where Hispanic the community is more like 80 percent oh. so my son is in low percentile um as far as being the one of the few African-American boys um, but however, that has also brought in a lot of other therapies. I, I didn't know my boy could count to 10 in Spanish until, <laughs> you know, a couple of weeks ago. And it was just like, wow, he can do that. Okay. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and what's his name? Carter? Yes. Yeah. Hi, Hi Carter. Hey. All right. How you doing? <laughs> That's pretty cool. I seen the TikTok video you had with him getting his hair cut. Uh, and, and that can be challenging. Like th that's just something small that a lot of times people just don't think about until it's that time. Right. I really had a challenge with that mm -hmm. because being a single mom. Yeah. Yeah. It was something that I had to kind of work myself up to because the barbershop is more intimidating than a beauty salon. I don't care what y'all say. <laughs> <laughs> so to go up there with my son, um, and it started off in Cleveland because we were there and yeah. Unc did it. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. you find yourself an Unc that, you know, you just trust and believe who's a pillar in the community at an old school barbershop in yeah. Euclid, you yeah. know, <laughs> shout out to Jerry, you know. And so he really was a grandfather to my son that he didn't have. You know, so he he went through the ropes with him. I think he was just a little bit over one. Wow. So that kind of helped him. He created a song for him. Um, and he knew at that time he, he wasn't diagnosed. But even Jerry kind of knew this boy is different. So his approach was different. And it just he carried us through the pandemic. We would go to his house and he would cut his hair. So that was another thing was learning that consistency and schedule with certain things helped him. Yeah. Um, and then it was a different, another, you just faced the, the challenges. It was, you know, finding a guy to cut his hair here in Orlando with, I have no family, no uncle ain't here, you know? Mm -hmm. And so you just, you just really trust God and you trust him leading you to the right person. So this time it did take three other guys, three different people to cut his hair at the same shop. And then we ended up with our guy, Derek and, he allows us to come in there early where it's not too much traffic. And he really, he knows about his diagnosis and has done research on his own and has really connected with him. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Because uh, our four-year-old, he has braids and we haven't cut his hair yet. So we still try oh, to figure yeah. Out yeah, what to do with that. No. <laughs> he sits for the braids though. Huh? He'll sit for the braids. Well, yeah. Well, my, my wife, she does his hair. Um, she just give him his little snacks and the iPad, you know, to try to keep him, you know, uh, yeah. stimulated or, you know, keep him focused. Yes. Uh, yeah. So that's that's what she do. But we still kind of struggling with wondering if we should cut his hair or not, because we don't know how that's going to work in the barber, in the, in the chair, you know, so. It's the, it's the sensation of everything. The, the noise, the vibration, the, and like I said, Derek kind of started off with his, his skin, you know, skin to skin, like on his arm and just like, this is how it feels. Just like it, I was really proud of that moment because that's another thing too, as a parent, you kind of have to let go and see how far they can go sometimes. 
Yes. I found myself saying that a lot of times we become our, ch our children's clutches in ways because yes, there is a delay in, in their responding to certain things or to learning, but there still comes a time where they will get to that threshold and then we have to let it go. Yep. You know what I'm saying? And I, and I'm telling my talking to myself right now as a single mama, and he's definitely a, is a mama's boy. Um, baby, you're going to have to, you know, spread your wings. And that leads me to one story. I got to tell this is to um, potty training was a huge hurdle, was a huge, huge triumph because of the trial of potty train. First of all, and I'm a, I'm about to be on the soap a little little thing right here because we're good. This is why we got you on the show. Training boys anyway, potty training it's already a challenge yeah. for moms, not for dads. Mm -hmm. And that's another thing I want to stick a pen in. Mm -hmm. Um my son was not raised by his father. It's not being raised by his father. Yeah. Um, and so me being the head of the household, um, there are some things that men should teach little boys. Yes. And one of the things I strongly believe is not that we can't do it, of course, but um, it should be done by their dads. When they are, boys are learning quicker. Mm -hmm. So you may not have, you, you know, those parents that are haven't even reached that stage and your child is autistic um, and dad is in the home, use, use that. If not, be creative moms because I had to be creative. Mm, yeah. I had to be creative um, because there had to come a point to where I had to teach them how to use the bathroom standing up. Yeah, That's something that you have to learn, right? And for obvious reasons, there are some books out there, and but he, it wasn't really connecting. The books weren't connecting yeah. and he was in that mimicking stage. And I'm like, I can't mimic. <laughs> You know what I mean? And he's, you know what I mean? Like, how can I mimic that in, in my head? So then I said, okay, I went ahead to Amazon. This was during the pandemic. Perfect time, right? Mm -hmm. Ordered a little plastic urinal, started off there and just put it on the wall, yeah. you know? Yeah. And letting him know this is his, mm -hmm. you know? And I did that. Then we graduated to, I'm just going to go ahead and put some water in a cup and pour it out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I assimilated that and it literally that one time he got it. Mm -hmm. And so that then led me to know, understand that um, when God gives you those little creative nudges to be like, this is how you're going to approach it. It may sound crazy, but just do it because these children are our gifts. God gifted these children for us for a reason. Yes. This is one of the reasons why. I have never and won't ever drag the other biological connection to my son publicly. Okay. Let's say that. Yeah. However, um, the way that God ordained it and has set it up to be was the wrong. Amen. Was yeah. Yeah. Because there, yeah, because everybody's story is different, especially when it comes everybody's to story is different. everybody. Every there's a parent that may not be able to handle everything that comes with being a parent of a child who is autistic, mm -hmm. and I and I'm saying that with all sincerity. Of course, um, there have been some very challenging times. I remember here's another milestone with brushing your teeth. Yes. Okay, my son has had extractions due to he would not let me. When you graduate from the brushing the teeth with the finger with the little rubber thing mm -hmm. and become strong and them gums become there, I can't do that anymore. Mm -hmm. And there are not a lot of, there's some, but there's not a lot of um, autistic um, dental utensils. That's one thing I would love to see is something that a little toolkit for parents that just have a little challenge time with opening that child's mouth and brushing their teeth, make sure they get everything that needs to come out, you know, or develop a fluoride thing that we can use it. Whatever. I've tried it all. Yeah. But there have been some issues with that, but again, we overcome mm -hmm. trial and error. Um, and then you find good people. There are directories, and that's why I encourage any parent, get connected to any um, group 
especially those that are connected to other bigger organizations that will help you um, with showing you where the resources are. There's so many mm -hmm. um, that we don't hear about. But again, when you are connected and again with these labels, it will allow you to be connected to some people that will help you yeah. with the resources, with the new therapies that's out, with just even articles. I'm connected in a newsletter, mm -hmm. anything. But the more connected you are, the more you'll be able to see how much more awareness needs to be out there. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Uh, if you have any questions for our guests, feel free to ask while we have her on for today. Uh, what self-care strategies have been most effective for you as a parent with a child with autism? So I always I do a couple of things and I do this for my future because as a single woman, it is my desire it, um, to um, get married if the Lord should allow. So I've, I'm already living my life as how I would want it to be when it comes to my son because he's in my life yeah. along with my daughter that who um, she's 18, but she's part of that too. Mm -hmm. So I purposely schedule time for me that I would with my husband to be, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I had one day a week mm -hmm. Um, I'm just, I have a slot of time where I'm not doing anything and, and that any, not doing anything, meaning no actual work. Mm -hmm. Um, it could just be me actually doing a staycation for that one day, just do, do a day rental and I'm in a room, not even in my house. So I don't have to be subject to get up and clean. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so I do that once a week. And then every three to six weeks, I do a solo trip. And I give myself three days mm. and two good nights is what we call it. So I always tell the children, you know, mommy won't go past two, two good nights, yeah. you know, unless I have to. Yeah. And the other thing is just once a year, I take a, a week for myself. Mm. So in between those getaways, I just find little ways to enjoy myself. I, it may be a meal. It may be um, the other day, I just went to Disney Springs and walked around the boardwalk, you know, just being a kid for a day by myself. Yeah. So just finding the joy in the small moments. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love that. That's so good. Yeah. Because um, every quarter, I haven't done it in this last three months, but every quarter, I usually do my little solo location where my wife is just with the kids and, you know, I just, yeah, hotel room for the night. You know, whatever, just me. Order just, in, order yeah, in. yeah. Watch the football games, just you know, yeah. wine kind of thing. You know, mm -hmm. so, um, yeah, because it's about time for one. <laughs> but that's good. You need that. You need that time for you yourself. Need it. Great. And then, and then you know what? Sometimes I do too. Like I said, who I might have to create this, but I feel like being in my car by myself, parked with the music on. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, even if I'm just scrolling on my phone, but not really scrolling, I'm just scrolling, but I'm listening to the music yeah. and vibing out. Sometimes all I need is a good 20 to 40 minutes of that. Mm -hmm. And I'm good. Don't let me have a snack. <laughs> so I have to think about, you know what? Let me go ahead and get me something to eat. Pull up in front of the house, chill for an hour. They upstairs, they good. You know what I mean? Yeah. And take that one hour and just chill. And I'm like, yeah. Yeah. This is gonna be my new getaway without even actually losing gas. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Yeah, that's something about being parked in that driveway that is <laughs> something therapeutic about just sitting. Listen, <laughs> I, I could be zoned out. You look up, wait a minute, but I think again, it's just finding those moments. Yes, finding those moments, and then having those scheduled times where you're not gonna allow for anybody to interrupt that. Of course, yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah, because you you still need that time to yourself. Um, Puzzle Pieces Partners says uh, self-care is the best care no matter how long it is. That's right. That's right. Uh, I, don't, I don't know your current uh, situation as far as relationships. Um, mm -hmm. So the question is, what has dating been like for you while parenting a child with autism? So I... Uh... Dating has been for me just kind of a I'm a tap in and tap out situation. Yeah. And a lot of that has to do with my son because the scheduling is so tight, but yeah. also sporadic, meaning you have a set schedule, but mm -hmm. 
but you have to leave time and you might have to leave right away on the spot. Yeah. Um, and so honestly, I, I've never shared this publicly, but recently I said, Lord, listen, give me two years of just really enjoying, you know, what it really means to be a woman in love with herself the way you want me to love myself. Mm -hmm. Because I know that from there comes the loving and nurturing that my son needs when I transition into um, another role in addition to a loving mother will be a, a loving wife. And so when that happens, it'll be the right time. Mm. So, but I was like, give me two years. Yeah. No, that's right. Hey. <laughs> so, so anything between then, I'm good. And and I think, honestly, that other things in my life will just kind of naturally settle in as well. There's some, I will be um, in Florida then for like five years. Um, in two years, my son will be nine. Um, and there's some other things that I'm thinking about with his education. Not that I don't believe that he's getting the right education, but I'm looking into doing something at home, um, having someone come in mm. um, for three days out of a week. And then on those two days, um, have a, he'll have an extra day home with me just to be with mom, yeah. you know? Mm, yeah. So that, you know, whoever God sends me, they will have to understand that he's, He's primarily um, a child that will probably be with us and, you know, until the, till our lives. Mm -hmm. um, that's a strong possibility. Yes, there are um, RESPA. There are adult living for children. With, yes. But I have to, that's something that I'll have to really consult yeah, yeah. <laughs> and really be at peace with, you know, and, um, and you never know. People grow out of everything. He could grow out of and have a smaller um, spectrum um, coming in on his autism. We don't know, you know, right. and there is adult autism as well. But what I'm saying is um, I'm, I'm always going to understand that that Carter's going to be in my in my circle, you yeah. know. So I, I believe that just with that headset and that mindset that um, it'll naturally happen for me. So I stopped pushing it. Mm. Yeah. Good. I stopped That's pushing good. it. Uh, what advice do you have for parents who feel overwhelmed by the demands of advocating for their child? Mm, that's a good question. Wow. Well, first, I would I would definitely say um, to look introspectively first. What are some things that you want to be more involved in? And do you have the time to do that? What does that look like? Mm -hmm. Because I feel like sometimes um, we have to start with what are we doing and, and not about what are we doing enough, but what are we being effective with what we originally wanted to do with it? Yeah. It took me some time to figure out how I wanted to use my voice when it comes to autism. And I found that, yes, I joined a group, but I also felt like my voice could be better heard starting with someone who was in the thick of the community from the education side. And that is the one reason why I connected with University of Central Florida with a young lady then who is a kind of a caregiver babysitter for Carter, but they recommended her because she's in the speech therapist program, right? Mm -hmm. So I began to talk to her about what what it is to be Black and, and autistic. Yes. I gave her a real big, you know, and she's, my son took to her right away. There was a couple of interviews, but I realized that she was listening to me. She began asking me questions. She had no clue about, obviously, the Black community and what statistically, unfortunately, we're on the down end of resources. Mm. Because of, um, yes, the color of our skin and where we live in, this, you know, certain areas yeah. are governed by that, what's available for your child and what district they're in. Mm. So she had no clue. And so her heart began to open up. And then we started dialoguing. She started sending me information and started sharing more things that were happening in the community. Mm -hmm. That was my avenue to awareness. So sometimes it, it can be on a bigger thing as being involved in a group and you could plan your own group. Some women and, and, parent, and men, some parents have really carved out a huge platform and I, I follow them on IG and mm -hmm. Facebook and everything. I love it. Yeah. Um, I choose to do it at the scale that I'm led to do it, but don't think that 
your voice doesn't need to be heard. I think that's the biggest thing is that the sooner you tell your story, the more we hear about it mm -hmm. and the more we can understand about it. Yeah. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. how, how important is, is early intervention? Huge. Yeah. It's really big because it plays a role in, again, um, the amount of support that is, can be there immediate yeah. and the amount of information that you can get earlier on the better chances you are in understanding your child's diagnosis and then making the changes because you're going to make changes. As soon as you yeah. get that, we all, any parent knows, as soon as you hear that, you're like, okay, my whole, at that moment, yes, your whole life changed again. Yeah. The first time is when you had them. The second time is when you got diagnosed, when they have that, excuse me, when they got their diagnosis. Mm -hmm. You'll never forget those two dates, yep. you know? So we, we, we can't be hard on ourselves either though. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, because this is this is you know what what you've been dealt, you know, and you have to go accordingly. Um, Absolutely. Which you know, like I say, sometimes you know it, it could be a challenge because you have that mind mindset shift. Like, okay, I'm here now, you know. Because like I said, it took me <laughs> it took me a while just to accept it, you know. Yeah, it, and, and you know what? <laughs> I'm not gonna say it didn't take me a while either. And that's that's the see. It kind of evolves. It the awareness really kind of melts into your brain. You know what I mean? Like you yourself go through this change because it's like this is my child. Yeah. You know what I mean? Take it emotionally, and it it can hit heavy. It's an initial shock, but just like anything that hits you hard. When it's that ripple that starts happening from that, yeah, brings you back into reality. For you, it just took a little time to bring you back, mm -hmm. but you were that much impacted. I think men and and I, I don't know how people are gonna take this, but I think women, yes, we are taking it to heart, but we switch gears so quick. It's like we download this, download that. Mm -hmm. We class, we didn't sign up, and we're like, okay, I'm a the. I imagine that most fathers and most men are just like, I'm going to fall back because she got it. Yeah. And then you, you but y'all are falling back. But at the same time, that pressure is there yep. Yep. from us yep. and your own pressure. You're holding our pressures. So that's why we're able to move and move forward because we know you're going to hold it down. But at some point y'all come to a breaking point. Yours took five years. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. It took a while. Um, but now, you know, we locked in now, you know, so. Because uh, once y'all lock in, see, that's another level. Mm -hmm. It's almost like the women that are supported by men like yourself, mm -hmm. y'all lock in, it alleviates a lot of the stress. Yeah. Because the way y'all are locking in, y'all had the time to really assess everything, to pick up on patterns that we didn't. Yeah. To pick up on certain stuff that we overlooked because we were so busy getting paperwork together. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know what I mean, which is mostly sometimes our strong suit. So it's good that you all have that balance because that is needed. And yeah. for the single ones like myself, we find our balance anchored in God, but also in the resources that are in our influence. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I agree. Uh, we had a, a question. Uh, what was your emotions and feelings once you found out? I think you might have answered that a little earlier. Though. I did, but I didn't say that I was mad and I was mad. Mm -hmm. I was mad because I was mad at myself. I was mad at myself um, because I'll never forget when his daycare teacher did mention to him did mention to me about him um, that he was trying to say something and it wasn't clear. And I went into defense mode. Mm -hmm. And looking back, I went into defense mode because I knew. And how dare you bring up something that I'm trying to ignore, mm -hmm. you know? And it wasn't that it was an, an ignorance that I ignored for a long time because he got diagnosed when he, I um, started getting him speech. That's when I started the speech. Mm -hmm. And that started when he was two and a half. Yeah. 
Um, and so that was like, let me just see how that goes. Mm -hmm. But I was angry. You know, that was an emotion. And of course, the sadness was there and just a letdown and just confused, all those things all in once. Yeah. And then I found joy. I found joy. And yeah. I call my son, my he's my joy boy. He's just full of life. Always bubbly, as you can see, when he came yeah. in, he just randomly will hug you and say, I love you. Randomly will say, give me a hug, you know. He's just one of those joy boys. So I I found joy when I realized that um, he just needed, he needs to be loved in a special way. And only God chose me to do that. Mm. Yeah. Because my five-year-old, he's the same way. He won't hugs all the time. He's just, give me a hug, just hug, you know. And, uh, That's he, him too. you know, and when I come home from work, you know, he's the first one to come and greet me. Don't it just make you gush inside? Hey, yeah, right. I said he he can he can have anything he wants. Everybody <laughs> else, everybody else just look at me in the house. They just, <laughs> like, um, there he is, you know. <laughs> and they really do mean it. It's so yeah. sincere. It's just like the sweetest thing. My sister came down from um, she's my alopecia queen sister from um Memphis, and she came and and when he saw her, they locked in. It was like, again, all, all the hugs, all the loves, and she just, a ball of tears. I'm like, don't fall for it. Like, <laughs> you're going too hard right now. <laughs> uh, that's funny, yeah, right? Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, my I, God. Uh, what advice do you have for uh, those who might be listening or for those who will eventually listen? Yeah. Uh, maybe they just got the diagnosis or maybe they're unsure about getting a diagnosis because I know that happens to a lot of people too, especially in our community. We don't go get the check checkup for our child, you know? Uh, so what advice do you have for them? I like that. I, I, I will definitely say that um, we're getting better. I yeah. will say that we are getting better and, and it's because of your, what you have here, your platform and what you're doing in the community as well. Mm -hmm. Um. And when you put that out there on threads, I saw it on threads. Um, it just made me smile because we need obviously more men, but we need more black men. Um, and black women, black mamas, black daddies. And so what that means is we have to learn how to accept the help that's available for us. If we just learn how to trust one another. Mm -hmm. We got to learn how to trust one another. If you see your brother or your sister acknowledge that my child has autism and you're looking at this child and you'll be like, okay, that means somebody is getting some help for that child. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That means that they're connected to some good. Yeah. Um, and then some good information too. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. amount of information that you will be exposed to by getting the tests done for your child will literally open the door to a better future for them, especially for their education. Yes. It doesn't matter what level we're realizing that there are so many of us that learn in different levels. Mm -hmm. That's true. They learn, we learn differently. And now we're understanding other countries have gotten it. Um, and so we're, we're slowly getting it that it's more about, um, how is this child adapting? And if we have a lot of children adapting in this way, let's create a curriculum like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Let's support that. But we need more of us to be in these meetings, to be in on your school board. I'm on my PTO, you know, representing. I'm I show up at these meetings, the you know, the one-on-one -on -one parent teacher conferences and the public ones, you know, and the IEP go. Yeah. Is support. There, it, you'll be surprised. And another thing, they need to see mo more Black people showing up for autism mm -hmm. and not being ashamed. Um, I just recently started taking Carter to school because it's a good school and, and we moved. Yeah. And so transportation um, is not an option. Mm -hmm. We have to make sacrifices too. Autism <laughs> from a parent's perspective will pull out... <laughs> your sacrifice yes okay 
And that's what it did. I said, no, I'm not going to just switch him to another school. That's going to throw us back. Meaning what he learned, he's going to regress. Yeah. They do that, you know, and I said, I'm going to have to make the sacrifice. But what I also noticed was that, again, pr primarily Hispanic school, they started seeing this black woman with her son mm -hmm. every day, picking him up. And yep, she picks him up. Yeah. She drops him off and picks him up. She's there. Mm -hmm. Just the visual of that changes the perception yes. of our community. Mm -hmm. And it's our responsibility. Yeah. Yes. So I challenge every parent, even if, you know, and we listen to a lot of, okay, well, such and such, when he was a baby, he did the same thing. Look at him. We can no longer go by that, y'all. That's right. Because we weren't eating the same foods then we weren't exposed to the same air, to the same chemicals. We weren't exposed to the same environment right. as our children now. Mm -hmm. So let's go ahead. Let's get the test done. Let's just see. And if it comes back negative, we celebrate and say, hey, but if it's positive for he's on the spectrum, he or she is on the spectrum, then that opens the door to the resources. Yes. Yes. Because we, uh, yeah. I know my wife, she played a huge part in, in, in advocating for uh, our I role. need to beat her. Okay, yeah. She I mean, she she was on it. I mean, we have, you know, our the you know, we had an ABA therapist, all kind of stuff. They come to the house for the boys. Um, just so many different things. And like I say, she picked that up super early. And I'm uh eternally grateful for her and 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 that and that process. Um okay. yes. I um let me see puzzle pieces partners uh she wanted to know uh what was your IG well because I before we close I wanted you to tell us everything about uh well give us your you know your Instagram all the good stuff let <laughs> yeah. us know about you um because there's people that's asking about your IG that want to follow you so uh, sure. let us know. So my IG is um, Alopecia Queen Movement. Um, I'm an alopecia advocate. For those that may not know, just really quick, um, it is a autoimmune disease. Um, alopecia areata is, which is my diagnosis, one of a few that actually exists. But alopecia itself is just a medical term for hair loss. Mm -hmm. And so when we when we know that and we hear that, it's like wow, a lot of people are suffering from alopecia. Yeah. Now there are different diagnoses, but again, you got to go to your dermatologist to find out what that is. Mm -hmm. It's not a death sentence. That's what it's not. And I think that's a lot of reasons why people are afraid to go to the doctors, to the therapists or to whatever, because they believe that this what's on this piece of paper is a death sentence. No, again, it just opens the door to the freedom that you have to mm -hmm. really understand what's going on. So for me, once I knew that this was an autoimmune thing, I changed a lot about my health. So as you read in the bio, I, I am a certified personal trainer. So that nutritional piece is, is always a part of the forefront of my life yeah. and has played a role even in my son's life. A lot of foods we had to cut off because we realized there were reactions to it um, that triggered certain things with his autism. Mm -hmm. so that was a huge thing too. And so... Um, Alopecia Queen Movement is just a place where women who have suffered from hair loss, whether it is like mine or chemotherapy, we're in the month of breast cancer awareness. A lot of women have lost their hair. They have alopecia. Mm -hmm. And so we're just here to support in any way possible with that. So that's that page. But Carter, um, my son, he has his own page too on IG. Mm -hmm. And of course, I manage it and put little stories up about what he's doing in his little life. <laughs> Yeah, so cool. this is called the amazing world of CJ. CJ stands for Carter James, and that's his name. And um, so you can follow along there too. And I'm also, um, I think I'm on TikTok as well as Allo Queen Move. That's the add to that, and of course Facebook with the Alopecia Queen Movement. Awesome, awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time, Stacy. This has been a phenomenal episode. Um, this has been part four of the <laughs> autism beyond a diagnosis. Um, so everyone, thank you once again for joining us. Uh, I'll have everything linked up in the description below. So those who want to follow you and stuff like that, they can have all that access to you. 
um, because of course we want to make sure that we we get your information into as many people hands uh, okay. as as possible. Uh, the lady asked. She said, "What what was Carter's IG page?" Um, amazing, the amazing world of CJ. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, okay. Um, yeah, so I'll have all of that connected in the description as well. Um, and then if you, uh, oh, and then also for those who are watching, if you're watching this via YouTube, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure you share this with someone because you never know what someone is going through. If you are listening to this via podcast, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure that you leave a rating and review by doing so. It puts you on a drawing for a free Amazon gift card. Who doesn't like free stuff? <laughs> this is Sean Heidemann with special guest Stacey Halton, and we are out.